First impressions, mate. Well, it's not a big hammer. It's been in England, it's all mine. The exhaust ports look like hammer dog shit, but other than that, the rest of it looks pretty reasonable. If you want. Yeah, it's a bit of a hammer Get yourself in service, service position. Service position. Hang on a second. <laughs> Sorry. Just, just chuck it off. <laughs> Come on. Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Good. Let's, Let's see what happens. We managed to obviously make a little bit of a mess, but we're draining the donor engine of all of its engine oil. And while we we uh, wanted to verify the variable, wanted to verify the timing because we suspected that there was a timing issue with the donor engine, we found that after removing the inspection plugs and locking this engine, it top dead center, that the camshaft, which would be over on this engine on the passenger side, um, that this cam, while on the old engine, is still in time and still correct. On this engine, it is jumped. And you can see your slit here should be up and down, not side to side. With the vehicle with the engine locked in at top dead center. So this is cylinder number six. This is number one. That's the front of the motor. And what they've done, when they pulled the engine apart, while it was still all under tension, they removed the oil pump, which is right here at the very front of it. This is your scavenge pump here and one on the back side. These are very simple. These are designed to return engine oil from the cylinder head back to the sump. It was Porsche trying to basically make a dry wet sump system a little bit more efficient. The trouble is, when you pull the front oil pump off of this thing, with everything still under tension and nothing locked down mechanically, it allows it to jump time and it makes sense that this time is this side is out of time because the IMS is still been locked in at the rear there wasn't enough give on the chain to the crank to the cam to allow it to jump on the rear but on this side because it moved it moved over and now this has jumped and at that guess I would say probably three teeth so it's jumped three teeth on the cam so I do believe that the secondary chain which get your intake and exhaust camshaft. I do believe this is correct because on these gears there is an actual timing mark that lines up. However, we have mechanically jumped time from here to here. So now the procedure will be to let the engine oil drain out of it. At that point, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the oil pump at the front, obviously after backing off the tensioners. This side is already locked down, the crank's already locked down. This side we're taking apart, so we're gonna leave this side alone for now but we will remove here. We will rotate the cam gear back in its appropriate place. Then we will lock it back down. And then this engine will then be mechanically in time like this engine is. Cool. Timing has all been done. Yep. It's all been set. Yep. It's looking sweet. So once the rear main seal's done, then I'm gonna go after the IMS. Excellent. Nice. Vari variable valve timing. That's the actuator. Okay. That's the electrical portion. 
So that's been cut off. Yeah, because the wire has been cut off, that means now that we've got to, I can't put the valve cover on it because I can't get to the two torques that hold yeah, it in yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we've got so we're, out of so we're gonna get So we're gonna get one out of the Correct. old engine. Correct. Balls. Okay. Okay. So now we have to drop that engine to get it out. So new rear main sail. This is to help install this slides over the snout of the crank, like so. And then it enables us to pop that over. Push it in as far as you can by hand. And then well done. we're not done yet. So this tool helps install the rear main seal. So this is the tool that we use to install the rear main seal. Rear main seal. So that screws down and as it screws down it pushes the seal in. Correct. Evenly. And it does it, yeah, that's the key word. Evenly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's neat, isn't it? So it actually catches on the end of the thread is the exact position, so you can't get it wrong. Well, yes and no. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. But it should be completely flush, shouldn't it? It is. It is. And it is, mm -hmm. yeah. But on the Porsche Boxer engines, if you look at them, they're actually slightly recessed. Um, in this tool, although it is for uh, this engine, uh, 27 and 32, it doesn't want to set it to the correct depth. Oh, right. So, Use the old rear main seal yeah. and then just watch as it goes in at the depth to make sure you set it at the right depth. Which, to be fair, I mean, you have a degree of, of tolerance. Yeah. Sometimes the rear main seal runs so long in one spot on a crankshaft, it'll actually wear a groove in it. So, a manufacturer will even tell you yeah. reposition the rear main either a little bit shallower or a little bit deeper, whichever you prefer. Yeah. In this case, I typically prefer to come out a little bit. So, but this engine was actually in really, really good shape. So, I'm not really all that but we can use the old rear main seal to help us set the correct depth. Yeah. And because the tool's pulling it down evenly, I don't have to worry about it being uneven all the way around. Because yeah. when a rear, when a seal's on the piss, it won't, you know, it won't. Is that a technical term? term? <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> oh. Focus, focus, focus. The rear main seal is now set, correct? Is that all done? Yep, that's it. So, and that's because that tool won't set it far enough in, you use I the use old this one. for a spacer. And the nice thing is when you do, you can use these ribs yep. to watch it walk in. And then you can follow the one rib yep. all the way around to make sure it's flush. And if you look at it, it is flush. This is now... Trash. Correct. Okay. Excellent, mate. Very well done. We've uh, dropped the engine we and the transmission connected. Yes. Correct. Okay. Because we didn't have a crossover to hold it from the top. I think we're better. But the one bitch about this job <laughs> is there is a fuel line. Uh, because we don't have a free on machine to recover the uh, R134A out of it, we have to leave the compressor connected. Well, on this engine, for some reason, there are no line disconnects for the left or right fuel rail. They have to stay connected because they're crimped. So ultimately what we had to do was, as we lifted the body of the car off of the powertrain assembly, <clears throat> we had to slowly guide the compressor out over the top of the, underneath, from underneath the fuel line, and then, fuel line and then put it on top. And now we're good. So as you can see, we're just about ready to completely separate. 
Motherfucker, this is going to make me work for it. Charlie's going to be bleep bleep that, bleep That's bleep. good for YouTube advertising, that word. What? Motherfucker? <laughs> word. No. <laughs> hey, do they penalise you? <laughs> <laughs> And we have one detached engine. Now tell me what's wrong with it, please. <laughs> Broke. It's definitely not in the car. So, day two? Uh, day I'd say day one and a half. There you go. How was the sum up for day one and a half? Day one and a half, well. It's yeah. out. Yeah. And and engine's out. Yeah, the other engine seems to be timed. So, it mm -hmm. seems to rotate like it should now. Yeah. Which means that Instead of having a 60% success rate, we've... 80% success rate? I wouldn't say we've been successful at all, actually. It's not right well, yet. Ch chance of success? <laughs> yeah, there, might be, there might be a chance of it. Um, so, but all in all, I mean, good progress made today, I think. Yeah. Don't you? Well, I think what I learned today was how bad British cars are versus... Floridian cars? Is that a word? Can you I mean, it is a word. I've never quite uh, typically you say. But the the American, American would be the word I would have used. American. You know. Well, American. Cars American are, German car. No, actually, I just say southern cars. Just to be fair, cars up north in the states. They probably get assault. They're way worse yeah. than these. Yeah. I mean, really, that car wouldn't even be on the road if if it had been up north its whole life and outside because yeah. the northern climate it's worse than it is here. Yeah. Really bad. And that's coming from a guy that's got a Mark II Astra. And it's thirty odd years old. The video, the video of his Mark II is. Uh, Which there needs to be an updated one. Now, an update. now it is turbocharged, yeah, we and it has good that. suspension. We will do that. Yeah, 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 not rotting suspension. No, and not cut rear springs. But speaking of rotting, I didn't say that. speaking of rotting, the exhaust is pretty shit. Yeah, and oh all God. of the bolts were so hard to get off. Oh, they the weren't. They just cut them. That's yeah. a lot easier, actually. We, yeah. Fuck it. Cut if I had my way, I'd have just cut the whole thing off. Torched the whole damn thing out of it. <laughs> then we'd have gone ahead and scrapped it. Yeah. Bought like a what six pack of beer with the money we'd have got. Yeah. Not much. Yeah. Yeah. So today, in sum up, as you guys can see from what's been done, timed the donor engine, uh, spent the time, figured out to, to deal with the exhaust. Uh, engine gearbox out. Originally, the plan was to pull the gearbox first and then drop the engine. But because we didn't have the appropriate gear to suspend the engine safely, we opted to drop them as an assembly, which by the way, that's exactly how Porsche says to do it. Don't separate them in the car. For me, I kind of, I don't know, I'd rather, it had to come apart anyhow, so I'd rather have dealt with less weight. But it's done this way. Um, so tomorrow will be to, number one, strip his old engine. I do want to look at the timing marks in his engine as well to once again verify what I have done is correct. Um, and then we will pull the gearbox off of yours, uh, we'll do the IMS in the donor engine, we will um, install the, the flywheel, the clutch, we'll clean up the gearbox, we'll kind of clean up the engine, we'll prep it all. And we're really kind of hoping in the space of, of this time tomorrow evening that we'll be talking about how great it runs and how smooth it is yeah. and how powerful it seems that it is yeah. for a boxster anyhow. I still can't believe you bought this one. Go on. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. So, anyways, I don't think we actually said what the final conclusion of tomorrow was. So basically, put all together in the car, turn the key, let's hope it fucking runs. I think the one thing that we didn't say is obviously we'll we'll try and inspect the old engine to see what went wrong as well. Yeah. Yeah. We'll kind of do that as we pull his engine apart, like remove the the valve covers. Yeah. And um, we'll see kind of there. See I have to admit though, I mean, other than that distinct punk, I mean, you got to turn this engine over and it just gets to a spot where it's like... And just make a thud. thud. So there's something definitely come apart in here. And I think the shop that you took it to had said something about... Conrod. Conrod. Or if it's in the States, connecting rod, you guys. Gudgeon pin? Can you call them dudgeon pins? Mate, I just don't know. I'm not a dudgeon pin. I just, drive, I think that's I just drive the cars and I destroy cars as well. Yeah, we already established that. So, yeah. Charlie it, fucked it. Douglas will fix it. It'll be fine.
TNB Racing. T and B Racing. T and B Racing, man. T and B Racing. What's this space? T and B Racing. Yeah, it's gonna be good. We're gonna do it. We're making a brand. You know, we should definitely. We bought the domain name. You know, you know how the B has to be done on that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Got it. It's an inside joke. It's a very inside joke. But you'll see soon. You will see there'll soon. Be, there'll be some info about that yeah. later. Yeah. Anyway, right, onwards. Tomorrow, look forward to it. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. Let's hope right early. Address, yeah, like less than one time, is it now? Yeah. Well, it's late. We've, the matter. first day one was 10 hours. You're pretty much on the nose, 10 hours. What? In te- yeah, in 10 hours. I timed it. Today. We've done 10 hours We've today. Done 10, 10 hours today, day one. Okay, so. 10 hours. What was because we actually said today, today was one point one point five, five days one point five, but yesterday involved driving, picking up an engine, pissing around with an engine, that sort of thing. Having a beer, which, yeah. by the way, to be honest with you, Chris, when you watched this, it was very nice to meet you. Really was nice to meet you. Um, thank you for the for the beer and the drive of your Porsche and get some tires that are not nine years old, please. Oh yes, yes, oh, yes. something sticky, yes, like Nido. And thanks, Chris, and, and thanks to other Chris. Five. Thanks to other Chris who has lent us his garage. You know, it's funny. Who has also you, gave us some. You beer. could almost dedicate a true two minutes of kissing that dude's ass for making yeah. all this happen. Because if we didn't have what you've got, Chris, man, thank you very much. You've been a tremendous help. It's been great to meet you. He drives a boxer. He loves you. <laughs> I, like you a lot. I think you're a nice guy. Yeah. All right. Good. Right. 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 Onwards. See you later. Take care. Bye. Bye.